Hello, everyone. Welcome to watch the video named Ribosome Display Technology. It is created by Creative Biolabs who is the leading custom service provider that has extensive experience in various antibody production and engineering fields. In this video, we will introduce four aspects of Ribosome Display, including introduction of Ribosome Display Technology, principle of Ribosome Display, its system, advantage and application of ribosome display display systems are used for the selection of coding elements dna or rna from libraries in which the individual peptides or proteins as phenotypes are physically associated with their genetic material ribosome display is a self-free technology for the in vitro selection and evolution of proteins encoded by dna libraries in which individual nascent proteins phenotypes are linked physically to their corresponding mRNA genotypes in stable protein ribosome mRNA PRM complexes. It is used to select high affinity, specific antibody, ligand binding peptides and other non-antibody proteins. Let's take a look at the principle of ribosome display in the next. Take antibody discovery by ribosome display as an example. A DNA cassette, typically a PCR fragment, it is used that contains a promoter, such as T7 promoter, and a NORF, encoding a library of the protein of interest. It is transcribed in vitro, and the resulting mRNA does not contain a stop codon. Cell-free translation can run to the physical end of this mRNA, and ribosome complex is consisting of the protein of interest, the ribosome, and mRNA are formed. Selection. The ribosome itself serves as the connector. These ternary complexes are exposed to target molecules. The displayed proteins library members binding to the target are enriched on the target and others are washed out. It is lead to ribosome disruption. From these bound complexes, the mRNAs are isolated, reverse transcribed and PCR amplified to serve as the input of another round. After 3 to 5 rounds, the resulting DNA fragments are ligated into an expression vector and then validate their biological function. There are difference in transcription and translation procedure in prokaryotic expression system and eukaryotic expression system. DNA construct design. In general, ribosome display constructs should contain a promoter, T7, SP6 or T3, and a translation initiation signal such as a shine del garno prokaryotic, or COSIC, eukaryotic, sequence. To enable the complete nascent protein to be displayed and fold into its active conformation, a spacer domain of at least 23 to 30 amino acids length is required at the C-terminus. The spacer also provides a known sequence for the design of primers for RT-PCR recovery. Formation of the complexes can be achieved through deletion of the stop codon of the mRNA, stalling the ribosome at the end of translation. To remove the stop codon from DNA, a 3 feet primer lacking the stop codon is used during PCR construction. Cell-free systems for protein expression. The choice of a cell-free system is generally based on the origin of the proteins to be displayed and the particular application. Rabbit reticulocyte lysate, we German D. Coli S30 extracts have been successfully used for ribosome display of peptides, antibodies and other proteins. Protein folding on ribosomes. There is evidence that nascent proteins, either in vivo or in a cell free system, fold co translationally on ribosomes. As in most cell free systems, the coupled rabbit reticulocyte lysate system contains 2 MMDTT. Different antibodies may have various folding stabilities that could be affected by DTT concentration in cell free systems, the main concern being possible reduction of intra chain disulfide bridges. Affinity selection of ribosome complexes. It is essential to keep the PRM complexes intact during selection. This is achieved by maintaining the complexes at 4 with elevated magnesium concentrations. A defined selection condition or strategy often results in the production of proteins with desired properties. Recovery of genetic information after selection Retrieving genetic information after selection is a critical step for efficient display. A novel in situ pcr recovery procedure has been developed for the eukaryotic antibody ribosome mRNA ARM display system and has been shown to be efficient for DNA recovery. There are three systems for ribosome display provided by Creative Biolabs. 
Prokaryotic ribosome display system, eukaryotic ribosome display system, and ribosome inactivation display system. RIDS. Here we have a brief introduction about them respectively. The first published description of ribosome display was for peptide selection using Escherichia coli S30 extract system. Creative Biolabs provides E. Coli S30 cell-free lysate for ribosome display, either with coupled or uncoupled transcription and translation. The transcription and translation procedure need to be focused on coupled E. Coli S30 extract. Coupled E. Coli ribosome display system uses synthetic DNA library encoding random peptide sequences as the template to generate PRM. Chloranthenicol can be added to this system for stopping translation. Those PRM complexes displaying interacting peptide epitopes were captured with an immobilized ligand by panning on micro-titer wells. The trapped PRM complexes are disrupted with EDTA to release the bound mRNA. The genotype mRNA was then converted and amplified into cDNA by RT-PCR. Uncoupled E. coli S30 extract. Uncoupled means the transcription and translation stages are performed separately. In this system, mRNA is obtained from native sources or in vitro transcription, and it is introduced into an E. coli S30 translation system lacking DTT. In this system, a number of additional components need to be added. Take displaying folded single-chain antibody fragments. SCFV. As an example, protein disulfide isomerase, vanadyl ribonucleoside complexes, and anti-SSRA anti-sense oligonucleotide are added to the translation mixture to promote folding of antibody fragments, stabilize mRNA and inhibit the action of SSRA RNA, respectively. Eukaryotic Ribosome Display System The eukaryotic system is often used for the selection of antibody fragments using the coupled rabid reticulocyte lysate. This system was initially termed ARM antibody ribosome mRNA display. The main difference between the E. coli S30 and rabid reticulocyte ribosome display systems is in the DNA recovery step. E. coli S30 system needs chemicals, e.g. EDTA for disrupting PRM complexes and releasing mRNA prior to RT-PCR. While the rabid reticulocyte lysate system employs an in-situ recovery procedure in which DNA was recovered directly on the ribosome complexes by amplification with a novel in-situ RT-PCR procedure W. About dissociation of the ribosome complex. This is schematic representation of the ribosome inactivation display system RIDS, for screening functional proteins in vitro. Step 1. The gene for the ricin-A chain RTA, inserted downstream of a random protein library, or cDNA library, is transcribed by T7 RNA polymerase to yield mRNA. Step 2. mRNA is translated in a rabid reticulocyte lysate system. Step 3. During translation, since the rRNA is inactivated by folded RTA in a cis reaction, the ribosome is stalled and a ribosome mRNA protein complex is formed. Step 4. The complex of interest is bound to the corresponding affinity matrix. Unwanted complexes are removed by washing. Step 5. The specific complex is dissociated from the matrix by elution with a buffer that contains EDTA and then free mRNA is isolated. Step 6. Eluted RNA is amplified by RT-PCR and the resultant cDNA is used for the next cycle or for analysis by cloning and sequencing. Ribosome display offers two advantages over cell-based methods such as phager cell surface display. First. The efficiency of transformation imposes a restriction on library diversity for cell-based systems. Because ribosome display is in vitro, this does not apply in ribosome display. The system has high transformation efficiency. Second, by including PCR as an integral step in the procedure, they make PCR-based mutagenesis strategies convenient. Ribosome display technology has many applications. Here we only give you four examples. 1. Ribosome display was used to select high affinity, specific ligand binding peptides from combinatorial libraries. 
2. Ribosome display has been utilized to select single-chain antibody fragments against a variety of targets. Eukaryotic arm display was able to select fully human antiprogesterone antibody fragments from an immunized transgenic mouse library. 3. Both the prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosome display systems have been used for the selection of non-antibody proteins. With the eukaryotic rabbit reticulocyte lysate system, variants of the single-domain CTLA-4 scaffold specifically binding to lysozyme were selected in a single cycle. 4. Ribosome display is a powerful means for bringing about protein evolution in vitro, since mutation can be continuously introduced into DNA pools in subsequent cycles, by using a low-fidelity DNA polymerase for DNA amplification. Ribosome display has selected antibody mutants with up to a 40-fold improvement in affinity over the original antibody fragment. If you want to learn more about ribosome display technology or related services, welcome to contact us at info at creative-biolabs.com or call us at 1-631-871-5806. We will be more than happy to serve you.